I'm Jamie and welcome to Glowing Beauty Addiction. Welcome back if you're one of my subscribers and a great big hello to any of my new subscribers. Today we're getting into the drama folks because I honestly I just can't believe the extent some people will go to try to be the drama rather than just discuss or commentate on the drama. So if you're unaware, my sign isn't lighting up today because guess you forgot to charge it. I wasn't planning on putting this video out today. I actually had a quick mom glam video to put up, but instead we ended up going full glam to talk about this drama. So quick rundown on what I have on my face today. I used the Present Primer, and I believe this was something that was re recommended by Wayne Goss. It is a very sticky primer, so if you want the full beat to stick. This is a great one. I then used, let me go through my pile here so then I can put it all away. I used this CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer in L400 Classic Ivory, followed by a mixture of Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Makeup in 3C1 Dusk and ColourPop No Filter Foundation in Light 75. I then set everything as usual with Pretty Vulgar's The Powder. I can't say enough good about this. Then Oh my gosh, so many steps today. It has been so long since I've done a full beat. I then used Rude Cosmetics Brow and Eyeliner Cream for my brows. I primed my eyes with the MAC Paint Pot and Painterly. I used this MAC um, palette, and it's the Shiny Pretty Things palette, Smoky. I got this around the holidays. It is a gorgeous gorgeous palette. I used my Rude Cosmetics Undaunted Blush Palette. Lord have mercy. Oh, I used Revolution Conceal and Define Full Coverage Conceal and Contour in C3 for a bit of a cut crease type spotlight type moment. Um, I used Tarte. What is this? Tartiest Pro Eyeliner. I used my normal Essence Mascaras. I highlighted with Rude Cosmetics Baked Highlighter in Divine Self, as well as I went into the Angelic Glow Palette by Rude Cosmetics. I contoured using my Tartiest Pro Glow Palette. I bronzed, of course, with Physician's Formula. And for my bright red lips, I used Hourglass Lip Liner in Icon. Now the cool thing about this color is it was specifically made for Madonna. So a little bit of trivia knowledge for you. And I went over it with Gerard Cosmetics Lyrica Anderson Gloss in Pretty Woman. You all know I'm not a lip gloss person, but this lip gloss is not sticky. Like my hair is still wet from showering this morning and it's not sticking. I love this lip gloss. The lashes, this is how you know it's gonna be serious. The lashes I'm wearing today are Lashaholic Luxury Lashes. And I don't know if they have a name or not. Instaglam. I believe I would have got these in BoxyCharm. And I used my Revlon Precision Dark Lash Adhesive. Now this is how you tell if stuff is actually used when YouTubers come on and they're like, oh, this is the best glue ever. If it's not all gnarly like this, they don't use it. Just my opinion. So you guys have probably seen all the drama going on with a certain Fruit Kid drama channel and Shannon Rose. Um, I have made videos about this other drama channel that you can find in my drama playlist. Um, and I'll be honest, I was not that aware of Shannon Rose or who she was 
I became aware of her a few months ago when one of the true crime channels that I watched did a video on there was a big drama kind of between them around the time Shannon was getting married. Um, I do watch this other channel. I do love her true crime stuff. Um, but when all this kind of popped off, I kind of started checking out Shannon Rose's channel. And first and foremost, I just, I love Shannon. <laughs> like if she were to ever want to collab, I'd be down with that, but it would not be about drama and all this stuff. It would be about being a mom. The fact that she was able to nurse her baby on camera, not only did it spark some baby fever in me and make me remember when my boys were that little, it also, I couldn't stop, I was just watching in awe for the fact that she was able just to and start nursing. When I was nursing my kids, it was like, a, I almost had to have my whole shirt off and I was all awkward. And yeah, I could not have done that on camera without there being a major costume malfunction, nip slip type moment. Um, I, yeah, I just love her. Oh, and can we mention, um, I may have to charge this drama channel because I went and I pulled out this blue polo that I'm wearing um, that I bought for completely other reasons, but because I'm speaking about him, perhaps he should just have to pay for it because that seems to be his line of reasoning. I use that term loosely. Now, the thing about this other drama channel is this is not uncommon behavior for him, unfortunately. He has gone out of his way to dox people like T by Alley, who used to be Beauty to Sleuth, and I did a video on that. And everybody should know by now that when it comes to doxing, there is no gray. There is just no excuse for it. It's disgusting, appalling, especially being that Shannon has a family. Um, Baby Snow is just the cutest little oh my gosh, her little legs in that video. <sighs> Shut up, ovaries. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, doxing is just appalling. He's also been known to, I don't even know what the right way to say it was. Let's just say he sided with an abuser and a stalker and put information out there that wasn't public. He victim blamed. And I... When I see him then on videos talk about how he's an activist, but he has done these cruel, vile things, it just blows my mind. And then he wonders why he's compared to John Cookian. Shocker. Um, there is just so, there's so many, so many things that this fruit kid has done that I don't know. It's just gross. It's gross. Um, so then when he says that there's like this drama channel gang, um, I'm quite upset that I didn't get an invitation to be part of this gang um, because they're against him for personal reasons or whatnot. That is complete BS. Um, from the drama, drama channels I know myself personally, there is nothing about disliking him for who he is as a person. But his actions, that's what I'm basing my opinion of him on. So when you do these horrible things like doxing, like throwing a tantrum like he did with Shannon Rose, that's what the public sees. That is what they're basing their opinion on. Um, he made a video about Nikocado Avocado and Trisha Paytas and how you know, Nick Accato should just deal with the fact that their collab fell through and things happen. But he went from like zero to 60 in two seconds when he discovered that Shannon Rose had left the property. Um, that's not somebody who's a friend. I am going to be doing a video as well on my other channel with my boys to see how they would react if somebody had to cancel a play date on them, say, and how they would react and how they would react versus how they would react once they found out that something went on, that there was a reason they couldn't be there. And we're going to see if a six and eight year old have a better moral compass than this fruit drama channel. Now, in the Shannon Rose situation in particular, there's been a lot of, you know, sleuthing going on. And that's not me. Everybody knows I'm a bit technical technologically challenged. 
<laughs> um, that and like, yeah, my internet sucks. I live in the middle of nowhere and it can take up to eight hours just to upload a 20 minute video. So as far as like internet sleuthing, that's not my deal. But from what I've been able to see on Twitter, it's been proven that he didn't Venmo Shannon Rose this money, which he always goes on. I don't even care about the $400. I don't care about the $400, but mentions it a million times. Like he's saying now he's going to go to the bank and prove that he has this money and all this caca. Come on. And like things is like these details, these people who are so detailed oriented just blow my mind. I wish I could be like that. Like the fact that like in some of his screenshots, it just says Shannon Rose or Shannon and other ones, it's Shannon Rose with a, a rose um, emoji. And that's sketchy in my book just because, okay, so if I have somebody in my contacts as Shannon Rose and then we have a huge falling out, the last thing I'm going to do is add like a pretty rose emoji after her name. Like, seems weird. Just saying. So I did make some notes on all this stuff. Um, I'm not necessarily going to cover it all. I might go off on a tangent, but these are just from the cuff kind of thoughts. So one of the first things that made me kind of sit and pause and think, yeah, I should take a vi I should make a video on this. It was the activism thing that just blew my mind, but I'll touch on that in a bit. I've already touched on it a little. But at one point he says that he can go after Shannon Rose and sue her and all this kind of stuff. But you know, his husband can't defend him because he works for a corporation. First off, what kind of law does his hubby do? Cause I thought it was like real estate law or something like that. Second off, if your husband can't defend you, why was your husband so involved when there was the Gerard Cosmetics cease and desist and all this stuff, but yet he can't defend you. And he speaks on your channel on legal stuff, but yet he's under a corporation. Like you would think that there would be almost I know companies I've worked for, now not legal companies, I was a geologist, you know, you sign stuff saying like, okay, I work for your company, these are plays that I'm going to work on, um, should you have a great play that you find, like you can't take that play with you to another company, you're not supposed to discuss it, so if I was working for a company and then came on here and showed you guys logs and maps and stuff like that, my company would fire me. So why is he able to give legal advice on Mango's channel if he's under a corporation? Maybe it's different for legal. I don't know, just my opinions. Um, the other thing that really struck me was like how, you know, there was this whole fake crying thing on Twitter, which just, it made me laugh. But, you know, I'll insert a clip here on how I felt it came across. He's going on and on about Shannon Rose was like my favorite YouTuber and all this stuff. And first off, yeah, didn't he say the same thing about Tana Mojo or Trisha Paytas? I mean, Trisha Paytas, like, oh, she was my favorite YouTuber and all this stuff. Everybody's his favorite, apparently. But yet then he makes this huge reach that Shannon Rose called him Fruit Kid. And that was actually homophobic. Okay, if... <laughs> Like, it just makes me laugh. If he was such a fan of Shannon Rose, would he have not seen all the support she gives the LGBTQ community, like taking snow to pride, all this kind of stuff. But that like, generally when somebody's your favorite YouTuber, you know these type of things about them. You watch enough to kind of get to know what they're about. That's how you decide who your favorite YouTuber is. Like, do they follow your thoughts, principles, you know, moral beliefs, whatever, if you have morals. Like, it just blows my mind that he made such a stretch when it is quite obvious from somebody even who's relatively new to watching her videos that she is an LGBTQ supporter. Just saying. So then, 
he goes on about how he had to get a hotel. We had some technical difficulties, as I mentioned before. You know, perhaps I should hire a videographer, you know, pay my son $80 to make sure my camera doesn't shut off. Anyway, he goes into this spiel about having to make this long drive and get a hotel and Shannon needs to be responsible for all this and his new blue polo shirt and all this stuff, right? Because it's a 45 minute drive. Yeah, a whole 45 minutes. Lord have mercy. It is 45 minutes for me to get to the nearest city where I live in our town. It's a 45 minute drive to get to like the nearest mall in the city. So by his logic, if I ever want to go to Sephora, I need to book a hotel, spend all this gas and like make a three day excursion of it. And you know, perhaps Sephora needs to pick up that bill according to his logic, because I'm going just for that. Anyway, like seriously, I realize that there are people that you know, if you if you were born in a city and never had to leave the city and everything was very accessible, maybe 45 minutes would seem like a big deal. Where I grew up, it was an hour and a half to the nearest town, <laughs> like not even city. So for me, complaining about a 45 minute drive and all the gas and stuff, I just found that humorous. Um, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't get over that. And then how on one hand, He's like, Shannon needs to reimburse me for like, I sent her $400 and I bought the hotel and the shirt and all this kind of stuff. But then prior he had said, well, of course she wasn't the only reason I went. So then why should she have to foot your bill? You're the one that decided to go. You're the one that decided to buy the ticket and book the hotel and buy your blue shirt and all. How is any of this her fault? And let's face it. If somebody wanted to collab with me and I went somewhere to collab with somebody, I'm going to have other plans too because stuff happens, life happens. If something happens, you're not going to just throw a tantrum and lose your mind because life happens. It just is the way it is. It's like the cable guy saying he'll be there at eight and doesn't show up till noon. Do you throw a tantrum? No, you just kind of got to deal with it. It's life. My thoughts. So he also talks about, you know, again, how he's this activist and human rights person and all this stuff. All these people he's rescued from Scientology. Oh yeah, and he's the number one Scientology person. I wonder what Leah Remini has to say about that. But anyway, I want proof that he's rescued anybody from Scientology because he hangs on to Scientology and just rides that horse to the ground. And I believe it was Nosy Housefrau said, like holds on to Scientology like it's an ex-boyfriend. Like just cannot let it go and brings it up all the time. Like, I'm sorry, but crap stuff that has happened in my past, I don't keep bringing it up and reliving it over and over and over and over. It's like that bad ex is an extra reason and stays in the past never to be mentioned again unless it's for a story time. <laughs> I am not going to try to make my coin off something as horrible as Scientology. Like, let it go. You don't want to bring more views, popularity, awareness to these types of things, which is why I'm not even going to try not to. I may have already, but try not to even mention his name because at this point he deserves no views for this. He is so trying to insert himself to be the drama, to be the victim, that there's that fine line between being a drama channel and being the drama. And I think Metamorphosis Rock said that. Um, I'm trying to give credit because I have watched a few videos. Um, yeah, I, I, I realize there's this saying like all publicity is good publicity or there's no such thing as bad publicity. But when you're wanting so much to be the victim, it's not even about the publicity. It's about getting your name in people's mouths so you can make yourself the drama and be the victim. So, you know, and then of course there was the fake crying, which I believe I addressed earlier and even did my recreation with my spanky blue shirt. But you know, the other thing that really struck me really wrong was when he attacked Shannon's mental health. I 
don't know enough about Shannon to, you know, talk about her in regards to this. I can talk about myself. Postpartum depression is real. And he's like, oh, well, if she can go on her Insta story and make it seem okay, then she's okay to text. No, that is not how it works. Myself, when I had postpartum, I didn't even know I had postpartum. I was able to put on this brave face, look at my new baby, life is great, while on the inside, I felt like I was going crazy. I felt like I was going to die. I was in such a dark place. I didn't know who I was anymore now that I was a mom. Um, whether it's postpartum or depression or anxiety, and he says he has these things, he should know then that you are able to put on this functioning face for others to see. Even if on the inside you're panicking or feeling down, to some extent you are able to put on that facade and get through the day sometimes. And to attack somebody for feeling like they need to be home with their baby is just wrong. My children aren't babies anymore and there have been lots of times where I've left things to be home with my children. There are lots of times I don't go to events or I've been invited out to parties or whatnot. I don't go because I would rather spend time with my husband and my kids. Can people fault me for that? You know, maybe if I have set a firm date, which nobody has even shown that there was for sure a firm date and time set in this whole thing. You know what? Yeah, I might have to cancel. Like, the reality is that life comes up. Anxiety comes up. Depression comes up. Heck, deciding you don't want to do something anymore comes up. Granted, yes, it is always the polite and nice thing to do to let somebody know. I will say that. But, you know, I have been in cases where it's like nobody gets an explanation. Nobody gets anything. I need to leave. I need to leave now. That's how it is. So I get why it happened. I can see the other side. I can see being upset. I can't foresee or understand at all or comprehend the tantrum this fruit kid threw about it, but we'll leave it at that. And then he goes on about how, you know, drama channels made it public or everybody made it public. No, he made it public. He threw the tantrum he was tweeting and doing his Instagram or Snapchat or whatever it was. He made it public. Drama channels didn't make it public. Shannon Rose didn't make it public. Nobody made it public but him. And you can say this about him. You can say this about Jacqueline Hill. You can say this about just about anybody. And you can say this about John Cookian. You can say this about anything. Be accountable. Don't say, don't blame everybody else for creating a situation that you created it. Own it. Say, you know what? Lost my cool. Threw a tantrum. Acted like a three-year-old. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I do love Shannon. I would never expose somebody I consider a friend. So please take my humblest of apologies. I overreacted. I am so sorry, Shannon. End of story. Guess what? An apology like that? Shannon may just call you and say, thank you for apologizing. Let's get together for that collab. At this point though, demanding this apology and threatening to expose all these personal emails that he all of a sudden got after her email was mysteriously hacked, allegedly. Anyway, like it's just so wrong on so many ways. And yeah, it this all became a huge thing. And people are liking it, like I said, to the Nick Cotto and Trisha Paytas. I also see a connection between how Tana Monju, as Carrie says, threw this big thing about, oh, VidCon sucks and all this drama with VidCon. So now Mango's creating drama because of VidCon and being ghosted. And I'm sorry, but make better choices. If I was going to a convention, I'd have my phone. You know what? I might have my camera. I'm not going to be lugging around my tripod and 
hiring a videographer and all this crap. Like, you go, you have fun, that's why you go. You're not going there for a collab. And I'm sorry, the tripod didn't make you look like a loser. Just saying. The tantrum did. But anyway, I'm getting a little heated. I just realized my little men are now awake. So I need to go do mummy business. So please don't hold it against me. Do not throw a tantrum on Twitter that I am having to end my video. I do send out sincere apologies for having a life. <laughs> anyway, that's all the sarcasm that I can bed create right now so anyway i have to go deal with my littles and until next time i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe you know what? i would love to reach a thousand subscribers i'm at like 517 so i know it's a lofty goal but let's go for it i have lots of lofty goals and i'll be discussing those soon anyway love you so much bye <laughs>